Hi, James from Ingrid. Special occasion here. Introducing Thomas the turtle, your tutor. So Thomas is a tutoring turtle. Tutor means teacher. We have Mr. E, professor, with a slide of snake. Common man, because he's kind of dirty as a snake. And now we have Thomas Turtle Tutor. Look for him. We're going to be doing some lessons on workbook. You'll probably see Thomas Turtle, the tutor, on the workbook lessons, okay? Anyway, Thomas Turtle is going to introduce to you some very common English mistakes, because that's what a tutor does. They look at mistakes that people make, and they try and help you after you've learned a lesson. Now, in this particular case, we're going to look at one will be a pronunciation mistake. In English, we have stuff. Stuff. Whose stuff is this? And we have staff. Okay. What's the difference? Students generally know when they see what the difference is, but the pronunciation is difficult, and sometimes they get confused, or maybe you don't even know what the word is. So let's go to the board. Okay. Stuff in English are general things. When you have like books and pens and things on a table, someone may say to you, whose stuff is this? And in this case, they mean, whose things do these belong to? Or you can say, this is my stuff. Usually we don't use stuff for one person because you can't say, this is my stuff. It doesn't make any sense, really. So what we say is stuff is for many things, or a few. This is my stuff. This makes sense. Not singular, okay? So, stuff is for general things that you have, and it doesn't matter what they are. They can be paper, or book, or pen. They're stuff. It's a nice catchphrase, or covers everything. Another thing for stuff is to when you push something hard into another thing, and it's not organized. So, if I'm trying to stuff this in here, as you can see, it's not organized. I'm just going to push. So, stuff it in. It's not organized. Okay? So that's another thing. Sometimes stuff is for noun, general things. Sometimes stuff is for verb, to push one thing into another thing in not an organized way, using force. Okay? Staff, oh sorry, let me finish this though. Stuff, if you do the pronunciation, kind of rhymes with tough and bluff. Tough as in kind of strong, hard to break, and bluff when you're pretending. Bluffing. So if I say, I'm going to kill you right now, right through Ingvid, you go, no, 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 I'm just bluffing. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. My bluff is, I don't have a gun, that's number one. And you're watching a video filmed five months ago. You're cool. You're okay. So I'm bluffing. Usually you use it in poker. People will bluff. They will pretend to have cards that they do not have to trick you. That's bluff. And tough means hard to break. This pen is tough, strong. So stuff, tough. Bluff. Repeat. Again, stuff, tough, bluff. Repeat. And that's the difference with stuff and pushing the verb. Staff. Staff. Okay? Staff. This is people who work in an office. When you go to the office, there's a secretary. Hello, good morning. Welcome to Ingrid. How may I help you? And then there are people working in the office. Tap, 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 tap. They usually help some higher official like the president or another higher person in the office. That's called the staff. Who is your staff? Okay. Now, staff isn't just for that. It's also for offering assistance. When you go to a store like McDonald's or a restaurant, there's restaurant staff. They come up, hi, can I help you? What would you like today? They are serving you or offering you assistance. Office and offer, two O's and F's. So the staff usually works with the off, off, offer and assistance. The last thing, stuff, which doesn't usually come up, or staff, is this one. When somebody's walking and they have that stick, that's a pimp walk, by the way. But they usually, older people have one. You know, an older person, kind of bent over. An old, an, an old way to say this is staff, his walking staff. Okay? So, and here we have staff. Laugh, math. Okay, so let's say it again. Ready? You repeat. Okay? So, staff, laugh, math. That's the at sound. So, the big difference with people have problems is, is usually the pronunciation. A and uh. So, stuff, tough, bluff, uh. Staff, laugh, math, ah. Cool. Next mistake. Thomas Turtle, tutor, going to help us with will and would. 
excuse me for a second. <coughs> Will, Thomas Turtle, Will and Wood. Of course you've done grammar, so you say, James, I know this already, why are you telling me? It's not that you know it, it's the mistake you make with it. Generally, when students are thinking about something they know will not happen, but they wish it would, okay, so you should put wish up here, they wish it would, they generally use will by accident. They, they say, if I won a million dollars, I would buy a, no, so my mistake, that's what you should say. They would say, I will buy a car. And then as a teacher, I have to say, do you have a million dollars? They say, no, teacher, I don't. Well, how will you buy a car? <laughs> well, teacher, what do you mean? And it's usually forgetting this. Will, there's a lesson on OPA, please check it out. And it explains the OPA for what Will does. One of the things it does is makes a promise. I will help you. Right? I'm promising to do this. Another thing is the future. I will go to the store in five minutes. So when you're saying this, we're talking about actual things we believe we can do. While would does have a sense, it's tied to will, it's usually used as a conditional. And in conditionals, we're saying, if this, then this. And if this doesn't happen, this will not happen. So it's got more of an imaginary feel. There's no promise to it. We're saying it's based on or will only happen if something else happens. We use it for the imaginary to say, I can imagine it happening if these conditions are right. So if, I, if these conditions are right, I can imagine this happening. Right? Uh, if I saved a dollar a day, I would have a million dollars in a million days. I can imagine this. It's not a fact. It's not I'm not going to do it. So students often get it wrong. Try not to. So if somebody says to you, I know you don't like your wife. What would you do to make yourself happy? If you say, I will kill her, you will hear, wow, wow, and the police will arrest your ass. I said a bad word. They will arrest your bottom. Okay? But if you said, I would kill her to make myself happier, then we go, oh, that's not very nice. But you won't go to jail, boys and girls. That's the important part. Okay? So keep that in mind. If it's imaginary and it's not real, not actual, you don't plan on doing it, you're not making a promise, use would. Okay. So, I said okay too many times. I'm changing my word. Finally, thank you students all over the world. One day I had to walk to my boss's office and get corrected in English because I heard the student say this so many times I thought it was English until I had to think about it and go, I'm confused now. I'm going to fix you so you never do this to me again. All of you, never again. Okay, you cannot use near to. You may say, I hear near to all the time, teacher. Or, I've heard near to for my whole life. That's because you're not educated. <laughs> There's no such thing. It's when people take two different things and put them together and think they both mean close, so we'll just say it. These two things are this, close to and near. Easily confused to correct near to, I understand why students do it. Because you've got near and close to, they almost mean the same thing about distances. So, hey, why don't we make super English? Yay, put them together. Okay, <laughs> no. Cannot do it, son. It's wrong. Uh, by the way, I want to thank Ray for that. That's my new thing. Son. <laughs> okay, son, let's go to the board. Close to means not exact. Right? Approximate. So it's got, and we usually use it for quantity. Close to 15 people came to my house. Maybe 12, maybe 20. I'm not sure, but it was close to. It's approximate. Okay. Next, here's one we use for, usually use for relationships more than near. If I'm close to someone, it means I like them a lot and we have a very emotionally tight relationship or strong relationship. So if I say he's close to his mother, he really loves her because they're close. Not close to his mother, they don't like each other. Cool? So close to someone means emotionally strong bond. Next, the easy one, distance. This is close to my house. America is close to Canada. Check on a map. And if you still can't find it, you need to get another map. All right, near. In this case, near and close to are same. That's why I understand why students make this mistake. Because it's near time for me to end this class. It's coming up in a second. But near, close, you know, near five o'clock. It means close to five o'clock. You can change it. Or it's near my place, close to my place. They're similar here and distance. But one thing near can do, close to can't do, is move. It's a verb. It has a verb use. 
as the day drew near, right? It means come closer, closer, closer. He neared the, the ceiling, getting close, movement. So near means movement. This one doesn't. Okay? So now you know the basic meanings for this, and you know never to say near to again. I know you had near to perfect English, but you don't, son. Okay? Close to and near, then I know it's good. Quick review, and then we'll be done. This video has been brought to you by the staff of Ingvid. We like to put stuff in there that you can learn from. Okay? Stuff, remember, things, stuff, people who help or assist you. Next. We would like to help you further, we can imagine doing so, and we will if you come to the site. Imagine, promise. See, we promise to help you. Finally, close to and near. Close to five million people have seen this video. By the time you see it, it'll be nearer to, let's see, I use the verb form, uh-huh, actually comparative form, nearer to maybe 10 billion, like the population of the world. We can only wish people. Anyway, thank you very much. This has been a production with James. And Thomas the turtle, the new tutor, tutoring turtle. And please go to www. Where's that? www. Ing as in English, vid as in video. dot com, where you'll meet me, Thomas the turtle, Slide the snake, and Mr. E. Have a good day. Don't forget the stuff I taught you.